Welcome to your September 2021 horoscope. My name is Kaylin and today I'm going to be covering all of the major transits using tropical astrology and the whole sign system. I strongly recommend that you watch your horoscope for your ascendant sign first and foremost because it will be the most overall accurate for you. The sun sign horoscope will pertain more to your career and your life goals, whereas your moon sign horoscope will tell you more about your family life and your current living circumstances. If you have time to watch all three horoscopes, I recommend that you do so because it will give you a very well-rounded and blended picture of what you can expect for the month ahead. And now let's dive into the horoscopes. Hi Libra Sun Moon and Risings, welcome to your September 2021 horoscope. I've got to say, this is the biggest month for you Libra. Your sign is impacted more than all of the other zodiac signs. So make sure you watch till the end because I've got a lot of information to unpack with you. On the 3rd of September, Mars in Virgo in your 12th house will oppose Neptune in Pisces in your 6th house. Mars is a very strategic planet, it likes solving problems, and when it's in the 12th house, it can actually do more good than harm, because Mars here wants to cut out things which are negatively impacting you on a deep psychological level. With Neptune in your 6th house of daily habits and routines, you may be required to sacrifice some kind of unhealthy habit here. Now with Neptune in the sixth house, this can represent self-medication. So you may be wanting to reduce your alcohol consumption or you may be wanting to give up alcohol altogether. Neptune also represents recreational drug use. So you may decide that you don't want to be basically participating in these habits anymore because the 12th house rules over self-sabotaging behaviors. So with this opposition between your 12th house of psychological health and your 6th house of physical health, you may come to this realization that what you are doing is actually having a negative impact, not just on yourself, but on your one-on-one -on -one relationships. And that is because Mars rules your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one partnerships and relationships of all kinds. Now, on a different level, this can see you being very proactive about your sleep patterns. The 12th house represents how we rest, recuperate, and regenerate. So if you are not getting enough sleep, this can actually be a very beneficial time of the month to try and get on top of your sleep. For some of you, this may involve actually sleeping in separate beds as represented by Mars ruling over your seventh house. Now on the 5th of September, Mercury in Libra in your first house will trine Saturn in Aquarius in your fifth house. This is good news for all you creative types out there because the fifth house represents your creativity your creative self-expression. It also rules over your self-confidence, your hobbies, your passions, and also your romantic life. So with this transit, you can experience sustained levels of creativity. Now, this can also lead to you studying something in the long term, which is connected to something that you are very passionate about and interested in. And that is because Mercury is a planet which represents education and it also rules over your ninth house which is your house of higher education now this transit can see you putting in very long hard hours into some kind of creative project that you're working on if you own your own business the same can apply here as well you can be very busy over the course of these few days but with this trine aspect, which is very beneficial in nature, your hard work can absolutely pay off. Now on a different level, Saturn not only rules your fifth house, but it rules your fourth house of family as well. So this transit can see you actually feeling quite supported by your family. In particular, this may be support from your father or from a grandparent as represented by Saturn. Now on the 6th of September, Venus in Libra in your first house will trine Jupiter in Aquarius in your fifth house. Venus is your ruling planet. It loves being in the sign of Libra. So this transit will be super positive for you. 
If you are currently involved in a romantic relationship, you can see improvements in this relationship on all levels. Venus rules over your 8th house of intimacy and sex, so your sex life can absolutely improve. And Jupiter rules over your 3rd house, which represents communication. So this can really open the lines of communication with your partner, and this can have a very healing impact on your relationship, and that's because Jupiter rules your 6th house, which represents health and of course a healing or a blessing of some sort. Now for those of you who are single, this transit can see you taking things with a colleague or with a friend to a romantic level and that is because Jupiter rules over your third house of friends, colleagues, teammates, neighbors, so it could really be any one of those aforementioned individuals or multiple, no judgment here. On a different level, Jupiter rules your sixth house, which represents your work. So you could be entering into some kind of romantic relationship with your employee or even with your boss. Now on a different level, this transit will see creativity positively bursting from you. So if you are a creative person, if you're into art, music, writing or literally anything creative, make sure you're writing it all down or vlogging it or even talking it over with another person. Now on the 7th of September, there will be a new moon in Virgo in your 12th house and it will be opposing Neptune in your 6th house. So this new moon in Virgo can see you having a newfound interest in things like spirituality, psychology, astrology, tarot, but also anything to do with creativity. The 12th house along with the 5th house represents creative expression. And the 12th house is specifically related to music, photography, filmography, and creative writing. So you may start a new project in one or more of those areas or you may even just do your own deep research and study into some of those things. Now, on a different level, you may set the intention to be more conscious with your alcohol consumption and with your recreational drug use. This is represented once again by this opposition to Neptune in your sixth house. This new moon in Virgo will actually be trining Pluto in Capricorn in your fourth house and it will trine Uranus in Taurus in your eighth house. Uranus is associated with unpredictable happenings and sudden change and the eighth house itself is sometimes referred to as the house of reversals. So any kind of new chapter that you start, whether this is a creative project, whether this is being more conscious with your substance usage, or even you trying to understand yourself at a deeper psychological level, all of these things are going to have a very transformational impact on you. And that is because of this trying to Pluto in your fourth house. The fourth house doesn't just rule over our family and our home life. It represents our deep psychological foundations. And Pluto as a planet is associated with intense transformation. Think of the phoenix dying and being reborn from the ashes. That is the type of energy that is associated with this new moon in Virgo. And with the trine to Uranus in Taurus in your eighth house, any new chapter that you start can have a profound transformational impact on your life as a whole. And this will increase your creative flow and even your fertility. And that is because Uranus rules over your fifth house, which is related to creative expression, which I mentioned earlier, as well as children. And having said that, Pluto is connected to fertility as well. So if you are looking to start a family or to expand your family, you may want to really look at what your daily habits are like as represented by this opposition to Neptune in your sixth house because it could have an enormous impact on your fertility. Now on the 15th of September, Mars will enter your first house. It will be transiting the sign of Libra. This will give you so much more energy. So if you've been feeling quite 
restless and drained. Maybe you've been suffering from insomnia or some kind of sleep disturbances. This energy can finally be put to good tangible use now that Mars is in your first house. You can actually harness this energy and put it into your relationships and also you can put this into increasing your financial earning capacity. That is because Mars rules your seventh house of one-on-one -on -one relationships as well as your second house of finances. So with regard to your relationships, you and your partner could be trying to resolve some kind of conflict that you've been experiencing. Now, this doesn't need to be your significant other. Mars ruling your seventh house of relationships could also indicate a business partner, your second born child, a client, a one-on-one -on -one friend, or even your maternal grandmother. Now, if you're not solving conflicts together, unfortunately, this could spell a little bit of discord within one or more of those relationships. And that is because Mars is the ruler of your seventh house. So Mars effectively represents these individuals. And given that it is transiting your first house, this indicates that they are instigating conflict with you. Now on a different level, with Mars ruling your second house of finances, this can show the personal effort that you are putting towards increasing your financial earning capacity. Now you may actually be doing so by entering into a contract with another individual. Now, lastly, this transit can show someone pursuing you in a romantic way. So for those of you who are single, keep your eyes peeled because there may be someone who approaches you in an extremely direct and forthright manner. This person may be an Aries or Scorpio, Sun, Moon or Rising. They could be someone who is involved in the military. They could be a police officer or they could be an athlete or even a model. Now on the 21st of September, there will be a full moon in Pisces in your sixth house and it will be sextiling Pluto in Capricorn in your fourth house. This is one of the most beautiful full moons of the whole year. It will actually be conjunct Neptune and because of this beneficial sextile to Pluto in your fourth house, this can actually represent healing something on such a deep emotional level. This full moon will absolutely transform you on a psychological level and it may even heal some kind of pain or trauma that you experienced in your childhood. The sixth house also rules over our daily working life. So some of you Libras may be resigning, you may be changing departments, or you may say goodbye to some kind of unpleasant work responsibility that was taking up a lot of your time and really draining your energy. Now, the sixth house also rules over court cases. So for those of you who have been involved in some kind of difficult, long-standing court case, this full moon in Pisces can actually spell the end of this trying time. And although this is a general reading, I would say that this will actually be a positive outcome. But please don't hold that against me because like I said, it's a general reading. But, you know, I do see this as being a very positive outcome for you, especially if it pertains to property, child custody, or caring for your elderly parents or grandparents. So this court case could involve putting them into a nursing home or employing someone for caregiving needs. Now on the 23rd of September, Venus in Scorpio in your second house will be opposed by Uranus in Taurus in your eighth house. Uranus represents unexpected change and sudden upheaval, as I mentioned earlier. And the eighth house, once again, represents sudden reversals. So this particular transit can see there being an unexpected change when it comes to your child custody arrangements. And that is because Uranus rules your fifth house of children and Venus is your ruling planet. So this transit will impact you 
on a very personal and physical level. Now, on a different note, the eighth house rules over your mutual resources and it also represents your significant other's financial earning capacity and their financial situation as a whole. So this transit indicates there being a very sudden change in your mutual resources with your significant other or even with a business partner. And this is a direct result of some kind of fluctuation in your significant other's pay. Now, on a different level, this can indicate there being some kind of investment opportunity which suddenly arises. Now, the nature of this opportunity is that it won't stick around for long. So it probably will involve some kind of risk or gamble on your part and your partner's if you're in a long-term relationship. But even if it's just you and you don't have anyone that you're dating, this does spell some kind of opportunity coming up out of the blue and you will need to act on it very quickly if you want to secure it. I'm not going to make a judgment on whether this is a good opportunity or a bad opportunity because honestly, with Uranus in the 8th house, this is as unpredictable as it comes. Even if this opportunity turns out to be a good one for want of a better term, it's likely to have some kind of unexpected conditions attached to it. Now lastly with this transit, because Uranus rules your fifth house, which indicates your romantic life, and it's in your eighth house, which represents your sex life, this can show an abrupt end to your romantic relationship. And you may decide to just cut it off. It could come from your partner, but given that this is involving your ruling planet, I'm going to hedge a bet that it's going to be you calling the shots on that one. Now, lastly, for the month on the 27th of September, Mercury will station retrograde in Libra in your first house. This transit will probably have the biggest impact on you for September, and this can see you changing your mind about some kind of higher education program that you're involved in. And that's because Mercury rules over your ninth house, which represents education. So you may be changing courses. You may be pushing the pause button on your current course. You may be recommencing some studies which you were involved with previously. And of course, this can involve all kinds of projects and exams and assignments being rescheduled, delayed, maybe the dates brought forward, maybe you're waiting for some kind of assessment result and that's delayed. But on a different level, this can indicate that your teacher may basically quit their job and now you've got a substitute or a new professor or teacher. Now, another way that Mercury retrograde can play out for you is that you may re-establish your relationship with your father. And that's because the ninth house represents your father. It also represents your brother-in-laws or your sister-in-laws. So if you are estranged from any one of those individuals or more, you may reconnect with them. Now, the ninth house also rules over your world beliefs and your spiritual and religious beliefs. So you could just be reassessing and reevaluating these all together. And lastly, Mercury rules over your 12th house. So you may be recommencing some kind of creative project or you may decide to scrap the project altogether or do a total 180 on an idea that had already taken form or that you'd already started. And so Libra, that's all I have for you for September 2021. If you enjoyed this horoscope, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from me on this channel, please hit the subscribe button. Enjoy your month ahead and take care.